Hello everybody! Hope everyone's having a great day so far. As you can see from the title of this video, we are going to be doing a Kung Lao guide. If you don't know who I am, my name is Splash NYC. As the name and titles, I'm a competitive fighting game player from New York City, and I've been playing Kung Lao in a very competitive setting for both MK11 and MK1. If you don't know what tournaments I've played in, I've played very well, if top eight at two pro competition events, majors, in specifics for MK11, also have won multiple tournaments for MK11 with Kung Lao, uh, and at the start of MK1, I've also been playing Kung Lao, placing top three in most tournaments I enter, doing very well in offline events, and have won a couple online tournaments in itself. So I just wanted to bring a guide out there to show you the strengths, as well as plugging in the weaknesses of Kung Lao himself. I want to show you how to bring out the best of his kit, while also, as I said before, to plug in the gaps, try to make sure you can take out his weaknesses as much as possible okay so i hope you guys enjoy this guide and before we start please please be sure to subscribe to dash fight for more character guides and check out their website for all things fgc they're a great source of content especially for people who are getting into fighting games for the first time so without further ado let's get started let's get started with the general basic info of this character what is his game plan the general overview of how he works what does the character do uh is he an aggressive play style is he a defensive play style his buttons we're gonna get into all that right now just so you guys have the essentials in order to get this character started in order to start get started playing the character in general right so what we're gonna do is go over his pokes uh basically this the little pokes in the game that uh the certain ones are good certain ones are bad i'm gonna just go over everything right now so uh, let's go from best to worst. Let's do that. So his best poke by far is his down four. Down four is in this game are usually negative, but his is minus six on block, so that's safe. The cutoff for negative frames are punishable frames in this game is usually minus seven and above, uh, but minus six he's completely safe. So no character can really punish this at all. Uh, so we can kind of abuse this. Has really good range, uh, plus 15 on hit, so you get a guaranteed kind of check right after, a guaranteed dead four check. They have to hold this every time. They have to hold this. They can't. Some characters cannot backdash, but not from here. If you get the down four right here, they cannot backdash. This is basically guaranteed for the most part, unless they armor. Uh, his down three is kind of all right. It's nothing too crazy. Uh, the only reason you would use this over the other ones because it's one frame faster, which could be really important, especially in the poking war against the other character. Uh, one frame does matter in that type of regard. However, it's also punishable on block, so I don't really go for that. Usually just down four. His down one is really stubby. Um, I don't also recommend using this only when you're up close. You should use down three sparingly. Down one you really want to use to check because obviously it's as fast as bun, but it is also very stubby range, so be careful with this. You should only be really using it when you're plus for the most part, or maybe a little bit of a check, but you could definitely, if you're playing against a range character, be very careful using this because you might get outspaced and kind of punished, right? And, you know, punishing in this game leads to a lot of damage. So you got to be very careful, right? Uh, lastly, he has his sweep. This is also a good poke. Because not only is it plus on block, but it's also low. And as you once we start going through this character a lot in this guide, you'll see this character is very much a mix-up aggressive character, right? He has defensive tools, but you want to use those, those defensive tools to get in and mix, right? So he's a low, plus three on block, start your offense, down four, right after, really good check. Uh, next, we're going to go over his override option, which is forward two. Yep. Yep, guys, he has an embedded mix-up in his game plan. As I said, he is a mix-up character. He has an 18-frame overhead on reactable. You cannot react to that. So this is a total guess between this and this. Total guess. He has a guess in his game plan. His essential toolkit is a guess, guessing game. 50-50, overhead or low. So you want to use that, incorporate that a lot into his game plan. These are going to be the most important things. And then you're kind of asking yourself, wait, but how do I kind of check them? What if they're kind of moving around, jumping around? Well, you got back three. Back three is mid, minus four. You want to be able to use this kind of check them really good stuff and you guessed it he has a mix-up in this string which is crazy You're like oh my god you have an overhead and low tide and you have a mix-up in this string yes he has a mix-up in the string so the string is back three three that's the low option and then back three four back three four also knocks down so you can dash up and do a mix-up again it's really good so you get a knockdown and then you can do forward two overhead or you can do low so it's it's he's a mix-up character. He's a mix-up character. You cannot react to this. There is a two-frame window between the low and the overhead. It's very much a guess. And if you're looking for the low overhead, this becomes free. These staggers become free. You can go ahead and grab. And yeah, it works really well, right? Next up with that, with his mix-up tools, you need to have like standing, shooting, standing, and punishes to get his pressure on, right? So he would be using stand one two. 
Stay one two is pretty good. Minus four on block. Stay on one zero on block. Good for pressure. One two one is great for punishing. Go straight into your combo routes. And most important part is two one two, right? This is probably a string you've seen a lot if you've ever seen any other uh, Kung Laos or any other tournament sets that I've played already in MK1. I use a string a lot. This string, although it lacks the range, is amazing up close. Stand two is plus one on block, which means you're at advantageous, obviously, as I've been going over. So you get to move before them unless their frame data supersedes yours uh, faster. Basically, is the layman's turn for that. Stand two, stand two one is plus three. And stand 2 1 2 is minus 5. So it's a really good mind game. And the minus 5 also leaves you at a very good range for down 4. So you kind of want to use this for his pressure. 2 1, 2 1, down 1, 2 1, stand 2. This is the way you really want to play kind of that basic offense. I'm going to go more in depth when I get into that section of the video where offense and defense. But that's just the bare bones stuff for now. And yeah, so what you're asking yourself is how do I get in? How do I apply my offense? He seems like a pretty stubby character, right? Well, he is. He is a stubby character. That's kind of what you have to do. You have to do certain things in order to get in. And what do you do? You use his movement tools, right? You want to use his movement tools. They're very flexible in the way he moves, the way he be able to apply his pressure. Um, for example, forward dash and walk speed, right? Walk speed is very good and dash speed is very good, right? He's very good dash speed. Very good walk speed. Use it to play neutral. Use it to walk in. Use it to try to get in as much as possible. And, and with this, with his walk speed, you want to use his dive kick. So, obviously, Kung Lao is a dive kick in every single game. And it's no different in this game, right? Dive kick. And the thing about this game that's so special for Kung Lao, right, is his dive gets no recovery. So that basically means he can move really fast after he does a special move. Rather than some special moves in this game, there's a lot of end lag. If you've seen other, um, basically, videos, other guides for other characters in dash fight, shout out to dash fight again. There's a lot of end lag and some special moves in this game. But this one, jump right away. It's very much... The lower you do it to the ground, as you can see, I'm doing it pretty instant. Uh, you need to practice character a little bit more to do it this instant. But if you just start off by going from the top, you can kind of mash after it. You can kind of poke after it. I'll call it calculated button pressing. Wink, wink. Positive connotation to that. Um, yeah, you can move a lot. This is this is what you want to do. You want to be able to mix them up, mix up your movement, move around. Because you want to be able to get in. That's dive kick on the floor, by the way. It's going to be using for your combos. Uh, you want to be able to get in to do a lot of stuff right you want to be able to get in mix up your tools because they're gonna try to poke and try to check you but you're fast you're down four now you're in plus 15 you're in apply your pressure plus 15 apply your pressure right so that's just the basics of that you want to be able to use his movement to the best of his ability but you're also saying to yourself well i mean his dive kick is good he has you know he can really get in really well however what if they just throw projectiles at you well there's an answer for that as well he has two projectiles of himself he could throw his hat he got a mid hat so the mid hat can kind of check him if they're trying to you know block Basically, if they turn on the move around, you want to check them with the mid hat. You can have you can direction it so you can go up with the mid hat if they try to jump, or you can go low. So, you know, three different options mid, high, low. He also has Buzzsaw. This move is amazing. This is what you really want to do to trade projectiles. As you can see, the magic number right there, you guys see down, down at the bottom left, hit advantage, plus 51. You're plus 51 on that knockdown. And if you trade projectiles, they're going to knock down, you get in. Look at that. Look at that. Now you're in, you start your offense. So this is going to be really important, especially in the trading war. So you want to get in, right? So one buzzsaw in, go in, apply your pressure, right? Now you're in right here, right? You're just over here. Throw that. Now you're in right here. You see the way you do it? you got to be able to get in. This is the character. You use your defensive tools to get in. Now, let's go over probably the most important special move in his kit. The most important special move in his kit. <laughs> I think you guys know what it is. Well, uh, if you don't, I'm going to show you right now. It's back forward two. This move is Kung Lao. If this, I don't even know what this move is called. I don't even, I don't even know what it's called. All I know, well, I know it's called Shaolin Shimmy, but you don't even gotta care about what it's called, right? It's not Shaolin Shimmy. This move is called Kung Lao. This is his most important special move and his most important tool by far. Not only is it an offensive tool, but it's also a defensive tool as it is a wake up with armor. So for, I'll basically go into that more in depth uh, when we go into it, but this move is extremely good. You end all your combos in it, you're plus on block. When you end it, so you get a free jump in right over here and you can really just use it to the best of your abilities and it goes very far, right? This is the move you're gonna be using a lot. In tandem with this move right over here, you can also use a spin. So you know how you guys Kung Lao in other games, you use your spin to combo, right? You know, in MK11, you go like, you do a standing string and to spin. Well, in this game, it's not like that. In this game, you use it on the ground and it just knocks down, right? But 
it's not only really cool because there's really good applications to it. So for example, if you EX it, there's armor on it and you can move with it. And as I said already, there's armor on it. So I'll just show this real quick, might as well. Sweep, and let's do forward to two from Kenshi. Let's do the sweep. Watch as I wake up. Two hits of armor, right? Two hits of armor on that string automatically. And the cool thing about that move is that it continues to gain armor. So you want to be able to use that for his defensive game plan. And you want to be able to use this. So you can mix it up really well. His his defensive option is really good. And again, the game plan is you want to use these tools to get in. Use all the defensive tools, all his movement, everything you want in tandem with one another in order to get in and use the mix-up tools I taught you. The forward two, the sweep, and his pressure tool so that's the basics the general basics of this character and now we're going to go ahead and go into the meat and potatoes of the offense and defense of how he works let's get into the offense and defense section of this basically this character uh i'm going to go in depth especially uh, more in depth than the actual previous section i'm going to show you what makes this character tick what you need to do on offense and what you need to do on defense and it's basically i'm going to be completely transparent with you it's the move i was exaggerating in the previous section Back forward two. This move is his bread and butter. This is the move you want to play. This is the move you want to use when you're using Kung Lao. It works both offensively and defensively. And you're asking, why is that? Is it just because maybe it's really good? Well, yeah, it's because it's really good on offensive defense. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm gonna say the same thing twice, but yes. The reason this move is so good is because it's basically safe on block. It's an armor move in this game that's safe on block. Minus seven. Only a few characters in this game can punish minus seven. Um, it's not very common. Uh, basically, you use this move for everything. You use move after pressure, between pressure, and neutral. This is what makes him tick. If you wanna play Kung Lao, if you want to play Kung Lao, you need to abuse this move. You need to abuse it. It's his best tool if you play any character in this game or any character in any fighting game, to be honest with you. You need to find his, the best tool of that character and abuse it to the best of your ability. And this is it. Back forward two. It's a safe on block armor move. All right. So you want to be able to use it on wake up and pressure. It goes very far. And you can end combos with it too. It does everything. If you want to end your combo with it. Plus 42, you go in, armor, right? You want to be able to apply pressure and use your armor. That's the mind game you're playing when you're playing Kung Lao. That's your offense. If we're going to start with offense, two on two, being plus three, right? As I specifically mentioned in the previous section, two on two. Grab, mix up the grab in there, throw in your projectile. If you're playing against a character who can't really deal with buzzsaw, you kind of just walk back a little bit. You have them approach him. You want to build meter. This character is very meter reliant, right? right? Really meter heavy. So you want to be able to use uh, your projectiles in tandem with watching your bar. Make sure you get your armor back. <laughs> Make sure you get your armor back. Make sure you get your meter back so you can armor. I'm basically just saying the same thing. So yeah, this is the move you want to use. If they, and for some reason, bait your wake up, uh, blocking it right there, like they try to sweep you, bait your wake up, you're safe. It doesn't matter, right? So you're safe and has two hits, right? Block for a little bit. Safe, minus seven. They can't punish it. You're safe. You have a safe armor move. And you're like, wow, is that it? You guys are probably just asking, is that really it? I mean, is that really for his offensive defense? <laughs> It's, it's 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 a lot of it. It's a lot of it, guys. Uh, there's a reason. There's a reason you want to move this move. Use this move a lot is because he's a very stubby character. And in order to complement his stubby game, he needs to have a really good ranged option. And this is his really good ranged option, right? It's this lariat. It's a lariat. Basically, in fighting game terms, lariat is something that goes full screen for the most part, or half screen, or just something that's very fast. It can check them. Uh, this is it. You need to be using this move a lot. Uh, very meter reliant, obviously, but he builds meter like candy, right? After, after pressure, right? You go 2-1-2, minus 5, armor, right? 2-1-2, if they think you're going to armor, minus 5, you're plus. You're making, you're, you're turning your minus frames into plus frames. That's the way you want to play them. And look, if they're respecting you, then you go for the mix, right? Forward 2, forward 2 into pressure, right? You can also cancel the dive kick in the air on block. You want to be able to use it down 4, right? Down 4, down 4 armor, right? Pokes into armor. You want to be able to abuse this move as much as you can because it's safe on block. But you guys are probably asking me, well, if it's safe on block, I mean, are, you're not really getting much off this, right? Then you get the armor over the price, you get 14%. You're now you're done with meter. <laughs> well, well, that's what you guys think. That's what you guys think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll get into that in the next section. <laughs> we'll get into the next section. But basically, to sum it all up, this move is basically offensive defense. Uh, you guys are probably wondering, uh, hey, is there anything else you really want to use? I'm being completely honest and transparent. Not really. You can use spin. 
Uh, that's a stay in three is pretty good as well. It's obviously zero and plus one. Uh, for example, if you want to spin as a good tool, two on two, it basically, it just kind of baits the wake up. So what a lot of people like to do is they like to jump on the wake up, this wake up in particular. You can bait it by doing this armor move like that and it's 360 hitbox and it kind of stops them from doing that so you can play off that mind game uh it has two hits of armor as i showed in the first section so and you can also move with it and if you're like well what if they you know what if they block it what if they're looking for this right don't you get punished no you don't because you can just cancel it and walk back you can just spin back <laughs> he goes wee he's out of there so yeah um sum it all up back forward two is his best tool and even if you're in the corner right if you're getting corner in particular, you have two of the best special moves in the game. You just armor or you spin. So it's it's amazing. It's it's he's one of the best characters when he's cornered because you're afraid of that armor move. He's one of the best characters in the game is when it comes to offense and defense because if they're trying to pressure you, right? So for example, if he's trying to pressure you like that, there's a gap in this string, right? You can armor, right? So and it's safe if they try to bait it. So this is this is what you have to do when you play Kung Lao. You want to use you want to use Shaolin Shimmy. You want to use his plus frames. You want to apply the mix-ups, and you want to use Shaolin Shimmy to make himself scary. So uh, another example would be like this: into armor, right? You're minus six. Maybe they want to punish your mix-up. They finally block this mix-up, and then you hit him with armor, right? This is the game plan you want to play when you use Kung Lao. And let me tell you something: watch how scary it gets when you use cameos cameo section of this video and let me tell you something kong lao and goro are the best cameo combination character you can have with kong lao this is what you gotta run i can maybe talk about lao lao also but i really want to go in depth with lao goro uh obviously the cameo system in mk1 is really good for covering up the weaknesses that the character has and obviously amplifies their strengths so i gave you guys a tease in the previous section about the armor safe armor but as you can see right here i'm gonna show you right now Goro gives him an armored launcher. This is what you want to use. This is the game plan that you want to start with Kung Lao and Goro is you want to apply this mind game, this fear that whenever you are pressuring and you want to press, the opponent wants to press back, they're looking for an armored launcher. And to 30%. Ladies and gentlemen, plus 42 on hit, 31% combo from an armored launcher. Now, some, some people might not know what an armored launcher is that are watching BNRs for the first time. Basically, obviously, armor moves can penetrate when they're trying to open you up, can penetrate their uh, standing strings or anything they want to meet you with. Uh, and then you get to, instead of getting only a 14% combo just by just doing challenge shimmy on hit, you can actually get 30 with Goro. Uh, you can always end it right there with dive kick, but to be optimal, you want to go ahead and do your combo, right? Look at that, 30% off an armored launcher, right? And I'll give you a prime example. Sweep, it's a forward 2-2, right? They try to pressure you, it's an armored launcher, and two full combo. It's, it's just absolutely amazing. I just love it. <laughs> it's great. Uh, it's, that's, that's the name of the game, armored launcher with Kung Lao Goro. Now, uh, again, like I said previously, is it safe? So it doesn't even matter if it doesn't work, right? Like if they block it, you're safe and you pressure again. So I'll give you another example, right? Let's give you another example. Let's do sweep into block, right? Let's block for a little bit, watch what happens. You're plus, you're plus. So let's try it one more time. I'll show you guys. As you can see, you try to poke right there. Try it one more time right here. Your turn. He tried to mash back and it's not his turn. So you have plus armored launchers with Kung Lao and Goro. I repeat, plus armored launcher. It is absolutely fantastic. And, and you guys are asking me, well, what about his mix up game? You have plus armored launcher. You would if they just block forever. Well, <laughs> Full combo from Goro. <laughs> it's it's fantastic. You go overhead, full combo. Look at that. And you're like, well, guys, you're like, hey, splash. Okay, so what if you just block over it the entire game? Well, full combo from Sweep. <laughs> Look at that. So they're looking for both these options. You have mix-ups that lead into 30% now, and they're safe. And they're safe on block, right? They try to punish, you're plus three, right? This is plus three, and over here, if you time it correctly, you're safe, right? Usually that overhead you can interrupt, but you're safe now. You can interrupt it after the, the string. So I'll give you a prime example. Um, right over here, it's a Goro again, 
and now they have to guess, right? And it's also just a pure mix-up in that front, right? So it's it complements it. It complements it very well. Overhead, Goro. You don't have to spend the bar. Like, usually you would spend the bar right here. Go into your regular combo. Chunky him out. But this time, you can use Goro to cover it, be safe if they block it, and get a full combo. It's perfect. And sweet. Overhead low mix-up, right? And you're like, wow, this is kind of crazy. Isn't this kind of crazy? Kung Lao Goro gives you mix-ups that can lead to full combo, and it gives you a combo for your sweep, which if they block it, you're plus three. And it gives you an armored launcher. Can Goro give you any more? Oh, oh yes, it can. You guys remember this string, the back three three string? You guys remember that, eh? At least the low or overhead. Two frame, two frame window, really hard to kind of fuzzy that. Watch this. Full combo. Full combo off the low. Full combo off the low. Now this, this is gaming. This is gaming, everybody. This is what I call, this is what I call, <laughs> this is what I call great gameplay. This is why Kung Lao Goro is the best cameo for him. You get mix-ups off your low strings, you get mix-ups off your overheads, and if they're, they're super scared of the launcher, right? They're super scared of this launcher. So you just go over it the entire time, right over here. And then it creates this stagger game. It makes this stagger game so good. It makes this stagger game absolutely good. And then you can go into armored launchers if they try to break. They get hit by the armored launcher. Full combo, right? If you want some Oki, you go into this little recapture. And then there. Yeah. Oh yeah, don't ever use that move. <laughs> I'm glad that happened right there. Don't ever use that move. That move is terrible. But... <laughs> But yeah, that's a, that's the name of the game for Kung Lao Goro, and, and there's actually more. There is more to Kung Lao Goro than meets the eye. You see how this has no red? You guys are probably like, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you, can you get a combo off the overhead? They're looking for this, right? They're looking for this, right? What, what if they just walk over and take the seven percent instead of the the large thirty percent combo? Yeah. Goro has an overhead move in his in his tool set. An overhead move. So you could just mix up this, and that's an overhead, guys. If you put it on duck, you put this on, we'll do stance hold, right? So you put it on normal, you go on stance hold. So now they're just blocking low, right? Look, if they're ducking, they're getting hit. So look at that. It jails into pressure if they block, right? So that's the that's the caveat for that. And if they try to block overhead, look for the low. They hit by this, it's a full combo. It Goro... Kung Lao does everything. It does everything for you as a cameo, and to be perfectly honest with you, I feel like no other cameo gives you as much utility as this. I will, for however, I know maybe some people don't want to run this, even though I'm telling you it's the best thing to run with him. Uh, it just gives you literally everything. You can also run Kung Lao, Kung Lao. <laughs> Funny combination, but it really works. Let's get into that real quick. We'll, co we'll cut back to that, and I'll show you how that works. So now, guys, we are on to Kung Lao, Kung Lao. Let me show you how this works in general. So Kung Lao, Kung Lao allows you to give him a better neutral. So as you see, plus two low hat. Allows you to get better pressure as well. 2-1-2, two, two, low hat, plus two. So there's a mix up, 2-1-2, two, two, and grab as well after. So it gives you a bunch of tools in that front. It allows you to safely mix by doing forward two into the launcher. So I'll try it again. Like that, and you can do your full combo and everything like that. And it, it gives them combo potential. So, for example, you could do something like this. It's a, your combo, right? So it also gives a lot, not as much as Goro. I believe the arm launcher is way too important to lose. But it also gives them a lot to his kit. It, I'll give you another example. If you end your combos with this, hold and call Kung Lao, you get a free unblockable. That's unblockable. As long as you let the low and the overhead hit, it's literally goes, it's it's almost, it's two frames apart for the most part, so they have to guess on this. So let's try it again. I already showed the overhead option. I don't do an overhead, that's a low option. So they, they're trying to block the overhead and low at the same time. You just do an empty jump, it's a pure mix up. And then you can just restart the pressure. So I'll show you what it means to restart the pressure. Let's put them on off. Let's do ahead, go and end your combos like this. It's pressure. Mixed, regular recapture, and then that, once more, because he's he built a lot of meter, same situation, low. So, Kung Lao, Kung Lao is also very strong, maybe if you, uh, at your playstyle, you want more neutral dependent gameplay, uh, you can use that, but again, mostly I recommend Lao Goro to cover most of his weaknesses. 
it's time to get into the combo section of this video. Um, the combo section, I'll show you all the main BNBs I use, uh, all the BNBs that are super consistent that you won't drop. Obviously, with obviously you need to practice them in the lab, but you want to be consistent in the combos you're doing, right? Uh, you don't want to drop them in tournament. You don't want to drop combos. You want to make sure you can get them 10 out of 10 times. That's why I'm going to provide you of what I do in tournament as well, as in casuals for sure. Uh, casuals and tournament, uh, everything. These combos are going to be used for everything. So let's go start with our main 212 BNB. Thirty eight percent and leads to corner carry. So it's extremely strong. Uh, I will explain to you how that combo works. You basically have to delay the jump two. That's the trick to it. You delay the jump two into back two four. That's gonna be his launcher. I don't really go over back two four too much because it's kind of uh, I don't really use it a lot. It's minus four on block, but the launcher he can't really hit confirm on block either. So I kind of just avoid using it. Maybe back two sometimes because it's pretty twelve frame mid. It's pretty good, but mostly you use it in combos, right? So let's try it again. Two one two, delay jump two. Back to four, dash up, one to one, and you always want to end. You're going to see a theme in all these combos. You always end in one to one challenge for me. Always. You always end in one, one to one challenge for me, right? So that's a two one two confirm. Let's do the one to one confirm. Jump two. Back four two. And look at all that corner carry. So you get a corner carry into plus 42 OK. So it's really good. There's also a really uh, kind of advanced combo I'll show you real quick, just in case. Like that. Jump one. So yeah, that's a combo you can also do off 1-2-1. One, one. However, I don't recommend it because it's kind of advanced. Uh, you basically do jump one dive kick. Uh, I'll show it one more time. And again, the key to that combo is to delay the jump in as much as possible. That's the key to a lot of his combos. You delay the jump in after the cancel down back four. Um, down back four is the dive kick on the ground. So this is what you're going to be using for a lot of your combos, right? Especially standing string. Now, next step is to go from the Goro combo. So, for example, right here, back to four, one to one, challenge shipping. Super easy, super simple. Let's do it from the low launcher, back to four, like that. Be careful if it whiffs like that. Good thing I showed it. Make sure you practice it a good amount. One to one, challenge shipping. Okay? Really super simple stuff. Off the sweep, you call Goro kind of a little bit behind. Back to four, one to one, challenge shipping. So there, there's the mix up, right? You gotta make sure you call Goro sweep, right? And again, you gotta make the timing is fine. Like that, one to one, challenge shipping. So it's a lot of practice, especially for the sweep. You gotta practice a little bit. Uh, over it, not too much. It's kind of easy. You just do mid Goro. Uh, back three three, use close Goro, or you could do mid as well. Doesn't matter. Just make sure you get the back to four timing down, okay? The other important part is to make sure in the uh, off the armored launcher, you wanna make sure your combo is consistent. So armored launcher, you call mid Goro, that's the first part. And then after that, you can do dash up, jump one, dive kick, it's a one to one challenge shimmy. Or you could do jump two, depends on your flavor. One jump one's a little bit easier. Or a little trick, because I know sometimes you might be able to miss that, right? So sometimes you dash up and you couldn't miss that, right? Uh, the back to four in general. Funny enough, I just did the easier version of the combo, which I was gonna show you. Um, yeah, you could do this, but sometimes that'll whiff like that, as I showed you, and so I kind of don't use that version of the combo. What I do instead is what you kind of just teased. I kind of just teased by accident. You let the back two whiff and let the four part of it hit. So back to four, dash once, and you let that hit, right? It's way easier, super consistent. As you can see, even consistent from that range, right? So I'll do the full combo right now. It's a one to one, like that. Corner carry, super consistent, super easy. Okay, so that's gonna be the mid, that's gonna be the uh, BNBs in the mid screen. Um, besides, oh, let me show you one more. I believe off the forward two. Really super simple, like that. Uh, if you don't have Goro, you can also just hit confirm. Not, not really hit confirm, but just kind of just do it because maybe they're just you know you kind of want to kill in the situation, so you just go overhead. Dive kick, delay the jump two, one two one, like that. Very simple stuff, nothing too crazy. Uh, that's the, that's it for basically the mid screen. Let me show you mid screen with fatal blow. If you have fatal blow, you can always just use it like this. Delay jump two, back to four, one two into fatal blow. Fatal blow connects in a lot of scenarios, so there you go. I'll show you the damage output right now. Uh, it's pretty good. 
Uh, I definitely recommend it if you want to kill. Do it like that. Uh, works basically off any scenario I just showed you. Just do one, two into Fatal Blow and it's always consistent. Okay? There's a 50 bomb for you. Now let's go to the corner. Corner combos are a little bit, just a tiny bit different. Uh, it's basically add a jump two, but you add a stand four in there. Stand four allows you to combo. So it's a pretty good button. I don't really use it in neutral, but it allows you to get a nice little hit reaction. There's your combo. Same thing, but except you had a stand four in there, right? Let's do a Goro. Stand four, back to four. One, two, one, right? Let's do it off the low option. Stand four, back to four. One, two, one, right? So you always, again, common theme, always in your combos and shallow and shimmy, right? Uh, any confirm into down back four, play jump two, stand four. Easy stuff, right? Now, if you want to spend the bar, you can kind of spend the bar, like, uh, I'd rather not re-recommend doing this, but maybe you want to kill in certain scenarios, you could do something like this, do down back two, which is this ender, and you can go into back forward two, like that, get a little bit more damage, or you can go into fatal blow immediately, so let me show you the fatal blow. Like that, and then you can go into fatal blow, right? So it's up to you how you want to spend your combo, how do you want to do damage, but I don't recommend spending two bars unless it kills, okay? And that's basically it for the combo section of this video. Now it's time for me to discuss the more of just the basic lines of his strengths and weaknesses. Alright, it's time to wrap up this guide with the strengths and weaknesses of Kung Lao. Uh, what is the character good at? So the character is good at up-close pressure, obviously with the mix-up game, as I reiterate throughout the entire video. Really good at mix-up game, uh, has really good synergy with Goro, can allow his mix-ups to be plus, gives him an armored launcher, has very good uh, wake-up options obviously from spin and back forward too uh and it's really good movement options so you can run around he can really good dashes really good dive kick and it's really good down four now what is the character bad at what does he struggle at definitely out space he gets out space pretty bad in this game he has really stubby normals as discussed two one two doesn't really go anywhere one two one doesn't really go anywhere his back which is mid doesn't really go anywhere and back three doesn't really go anywhere so you really have to play off his strongest tool which is obviously the lariat and you have to play off of goro goro covers the gaps in a lot of these things really well uh he also has really bad jump ins his jump ins are pretty terrible funny enough uh as kung lao this one's all right but this jump three is definitely abysmal he has probably the worst jump three in the game uh, but this is why he's very unorthodox character, so you have to play him a little bit meticulously, kind of make your way in. But once you get in, you apply the mix immediately, apply the pressure immediately, you kind of want to be in their face. So you need to play, as I said, a uh, very slow game at first, but then you try to apply the pressure once you get the hit, right? So what are my final thoughts about the character? I think he's very strong. I think I think the option to have an armored launcher or something is very unique to certain characters. Most likely like three, two to three of them only have that. And it, him in particular has the best reward of an armored launcher. He gets 30%. A lot of characters only get like 15 to 18 if they do have that option. He gets 30. So that's the name of the game. His plus frames are really good. His really good plus frames. A really good mix-up game. It's unreactable. His low and overhead is unreactable. And his movement is actually extremely strong. So those are my final thoughts. Where do I place them in the roster? Definitely upper echelon. He's upper echelon he's a little unorthodox to play but he's definitely those type of characters are extremely scary um to play against and honestly uh you got to be wary at all times especially when he has that armored launcher option and his mix-up game if you guys reached the end of the video thank you so much i really appreciate taking the time out of your day to watch this kung lao guide uh worked pretty hard on it wanted to make it as comprehensive as possible i uh, hope you guys have as much fun with this character as i have uh play it to your heart's consent practice uh you can also check out all the things shown in this video in the text version via the link in the description below if you like this video please leave a like or comment below with your thoughts i really want to know like what i could have done better what i could have provided to elaborate on things please let me know and yeah again thanks for watching shout out to dash for giving me this opportunity um please check out all their character guides check out their website for all fgc things related and i hope you guys have a great rest of your day bye bye